Hello students. In this video, we are going to learn about static CMOS design style. The static CMOS design style, which is the widely used logic style among all the CMOS design style. In the last video, we saw about a CMOS structure and that usually fall under a static circuit. So usually the CMOS falls under a broad class of logic circuits which is called a static circuit. And that is easy to implement. So people usually use CMOS logic design that is made up of static circuits. What does the static circuit means? What does this static circuit means? At every point in time, each gate output is connected either to VDD or to VSS. That's what we learned in the previous video. What is it? The pull-up network, pull-down network. Pull-up network will be connected between your output and VDD, whereas your pull-down network will be connected between your output and VSS. So here in static CMOS design style, at every point in time, each of your gate output is connected either to VDD or to your VSS. So what will be the output of your circuit? The output will be the same as that of your Boolean expression or your Boolean function. What am I talking? Consider if my output or the expression Y is equal to A plus B and or gate. So if my Y is equal to A plus B, if I feed A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1, what will I get in my output? Definitely it will be Y is equal to 1. That is how we solve through a Boolean function. Here, if I use static CMOS design style, that will be the same operation. Means I can get either a 0 or 1 in your output based on your input that will be same as that of your boolean expression means somewhere some changes is there that's what i'm me mentioning it will be same in static circuit what is that in your dynamic circuit there will be a presence of temporary storage of signal values there will be a temporary storage will be there in your dynamic circuit and your output sometimes it will not be zero and it will not be one there will be an intermediate value that will be occurring in your output and that particular voltage will be stored in that capacitor that is in the load side. So that is the difference between your static circuitry and your dynamic circuitry. As of now, we are not dealing with dynamic CMOS. So in static CMOS, the output will either stay in 1 or in 0. That will be the same as that of your Boolean expressions output. And one more thing that we must notice. At any point, whatever the time it may be, your outputs will be connected either to your supply VDD or it will be connected to the ground or VSS. See now, so far I was talking, it consists of PUN, PDN, PUN will be on the top and PDN will be on the bottom. So PUN will be consisting of P MOSFETs and PDN will be consisting of N MOSFET, of course. So what are the inputs that I can feed to my pull-up network? The inputs that I'm going to feed to my pull-up network must be the same that I'm going to apply to my pull-down network as well. See, input 1 to n. n number of inputs I have fed to my pull-up network. How many inputs are there to my pull-down network? The same number of inputs has been fed to my pull-down network as well. From where my output has been taken, join both pull-up network and pull-down pull down network and you can take an output from those. Pull-up network is connected to VDD and pull-down network has been connected to VSS. This diagram is nothing but your static CMOS design style. Right? Next step. Static CMOS, I said it is a combination of two networks, pull-up network, pull-down network. How many number of inputs? It can be n number of inputs and that n number of input is given to both your pull-up network and pull-down network. And your output and VDD will make a connection or output and your VSS will make a connection. 
if my output and VDD makes a connection, your output will be one. Yes. If my output and VSS make a connection, your output will be zero. Which means output will be charged to VDD. So making your output equal to one, or there is a connection towards ground. So whatever voltage is there in your output will be discharged to ground. That is what your output has become zero. So how many number of transistors is required for a static CMOS? If I have n number of inputs, I will be having two n transistors. What is it? If I have n number of inputs, I will be using two n transistor. N number of transistors for your pull up network and n number of transistor for your pull down network. If I use a single transistor, I mean single input, a single transistor will be on the top and single transistor will be on the bottom. Transistors, what I'm talking is MOSFET. One MOSFET in one N MOSFET on the top, I mean bottom, and one P MOSFET on the top if my input is single input. So the total number of transistors that I'm going to use in a static CMOS style is nothing but 2N transistor. What we saw in the last class, how the MOSFET is going to turn on and off. If I use zero, my transistor will be my MOSFET, my N MOSFET will be off. If I give one, my N MOSFET is going to turn on. For a P MOSFET, if I give zero, my device will turn on. And if I give one, my device is going to turn off. This is most important. That's what I'm repeating it again and again. So now consider the working principle of a static CMOS inverter. So if it is a static CMOS, we must have a pull-up network and a pull-down network. Pull-up network, yes, it will be made up of P MOSFETs. Pull-down network will be made up of N MOSFETs. Now listen. Here, inverter. How many inputs will be there on inverter? In an inverter, we'll be having only one input and one output. What is it? If I give one, I'll be getting zero at the output. If I give zero in the input, I'll be get one at the output. Right? So listen. What I've used one input, so there are one transistor or one P MOSFET in the area of pull down network. I've replaced with a single P MOSFET. And in the block of pull down network, I've replaced with a single N MOSFETs. Right? And the same input has to be fed to both your PMOS as well as NMOS. So I have just clubbed both the input and I have given a common input to the input of the gates to both of the transistor. And in the output, I have taken, I have connected both my pull up network and pull down network and I have taken my output. So this is a simple uh, logic gate design that I have drawn down. One, I give as an input, I will be getting zero. And if I give zero, I'll get one. So how this circuit, the static CMOS, is going to work as an inverter? That we will see now. See, when I'm feeding input as zero, we must get output as one. I've already said in the previous video, if I'm going to get output as one, which network will be on? P MOSFETs will be on. Or my pull-up network is on. That is one way of understanding the circuit. What is in another way? If I give zero to my P MOSFET, whether my MOSFET will turn on or off. If I give zero to a P MOSFET, see here, if I give zero to a P MOSFET, my device is going to turn on, right? If I give zero to P MOSFET, my device will turn on. What is this MOSFET? MOSFET is nothing but a switch. So that is it, the switch is shorter and my output will get the supply voltage of VDD. So I have written output is equal to one. So the same zero is given to my N MOSFET also. If I feed a zero to my N MOSFET, what is happening? It is turning off, right? So giving a zero to N MOSFET, my device has been turned off. 
so there is no connection or the circuit or the n mosfet is making a open connection so my output has been charged to vdd so i fed zero at the input p mosfet made a connection my output has become equal to 1 i am making it clear because this if you don't understand this particular concept studying the bigger concepts will be most difficult because the static inverter is a widely used circuit design style right next we'll see for the other combination as well when i give input as 1 i must get my output as 0 that is my inverter logic now giving a 1 if i give 1 to my p mosfet my pull down network if i give 1 to p mosfet what is going to happen my device is going to shut off if i give the same one to my n mos my device will turn on so giving a one will turn on your n mos if giving a one will turn on your n mos and there exists a connection between your output and your ground right so whatever voltage is there in your output that will be discharged towards ground as this MOSFET is nothing but a switch. It provided a short circuit between your output and ground. So the voltage that was there in your output will be discharged to ground. So my output became equal to zero. What was my input? One. And the output is zero. Other words, you can easily say my output is zero. What has provided a connection? My pull down network will provide a connection and a path is existing between your output and ground right so here we just explained or covered what actually is a static cmos pull up network pull down network inputs same number of input giving a one what is happening giving a zero what is happening in the next video we will learn about dynamic cmos thank you